Praise the Lord, church. How many is happy to be in the house tonight? Amen. Good to see everybody come out. Thanks for allowing us to come and minister and be ministered to. to sit with some of the, the respectfully old folks. The people with experience. The some people that we need to look up to. Amen. I've got some announcements. I've only got four of them tonight. Um, the resource room, they're going to be cleaning it out. And uh, the available books and resources have been moved to room 200, which is the room above the foyer, um, ger- directly above it. So if you'd like any of those, please take them home. Uh, what you want this week before they're removed. So after this week, they're going to get rid of them some way or another. Bible quizzing sale this Sunday is immediately after service. Come support our Bible quizzers and fundraising to send them off. Um, this fifth Sunday worship is, uh, fellowship is this Sunday after church at 5 p.m. in the gym. Say 5 p.m. in the gym. We're going to have a great time of basketball and volleyball and fellowship. Brother Jimmy's stated about what we're doing, but there's going to be all different ages, age groups that will be playing. Uh, there'll be the little kids, which Brother Gene will be the coach for the boys and the little girls. The, uh, Sister Jean will be the coach, so uh, I'm excited to see that. There will be, uh, you can make your own teams in volleyball. There may be signups for that, but um, also the youth will be selling pizza for a fundraiser. So if you're hungry, don't eat before you come. 5 p.m., we will be serving you pizza and and snacks and drinks as well. Um, Our last announcement for tonight is Monday night prayer, July 1st. Uh, The sanctuary will be open from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then uh, proceeding right in the middle of it will be live prayer with music and singing from 645 to 715. There will also be youth prayer and children's prayer from 615 to 645. Uh, in rooms 128 and room 129, just outside of there. Um, so if you've got a youth, just plan on being here from uh, 6 o'clock until 7, oh, yeah, 6.45 until 8, or missing the times on that. Just be here for a little while. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a lot of our youth and hyphen being used tonight. I'm, I'm really happy to be able to, to see that. And at this time, Brother Jackson Burner is going to come. And he's going to bring us into worship. All right. The ushers can come forward. Um, in Psalm 34, 1, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. In later verses of this chapter, it talks about the righteous crying out and the Lord delivering them. I believe when we praise and worship in our hard times, God hears our cries for deliverance and wants to comfort us. So let's let God have his way in the service and worship him and see what God can do for us. Let's pray. God, I thank you for allowing us to come here today and bring us here safely. I pray that you would use this offering for your will and that you would bless the rest of the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Tell the world what you're about. I'm going to sing a song that goes on and on and on. I'm going to shout it out. Tell the world what you're about. I'm going to sing a song that goes on and on and on. How your love came crashing over me Yeah, your love came crashing over me How you came to set the captives free And we won't stop till the whole world knows that There is power in the name of Jesus By our faith in his name there is freedom There is power in the name of Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah
now my life is changed And I'll never be the same Cause you came and you rescued me Way back on Calvary How your love came crashing over me Yeah, your love came crashing over me How you came to set the captives free And we won't stop till the whole world knows that and say thank you Jesus Lord there's power in your name tonight God there's nothing that you cannot do and we call on the name of Jesus hallelujah Lord we worship you and you alone tonight God amen amen Lord you're all powerful tonight thank you Jesus thank you Jesus amen I already feel his spirit moving in this place I'm excited for what he's about to do Amen. I've come with expectancy, knowing that God's going to move. Amen. Amen. Tonight, we have our kids' choir that's going to come up. We have all ages of youth, and so we're going to welcome them and worship with them. Praise the Lord. Oh, yep, we got one more right there. Can you turn that one on? Okay. So we have kind of a smaller group today. Um, our kids, we have nine kids um, at kids camp. So that's awesome. They're having a great time up there at kids camp. So continue to keep them in your prayers. But we are here to sing Priceless Treasure. So just worship with us as we sing.
Amen. Wasn't that awesome? Give a round of applause for our, for our young kids. That is awesome. Just to think that my young one is going to be there before I know it. It's going to be amazing. It's cool to see the kids up there worshiping the Lord. Amen. We're going to go into a time of prayer this evening, and we have a, another student, a hyphen, actually, that's going to come up and do that. So, Cameron, if you want to go ahead and come on up. been a little nervous to come up here. I'm usually behind there singing. I'm not really talking that much, but I've been trying to think of a way just to talk about prayer and what, how many prayers God has answered in my life. And the only thing I have ever been able to come up with is many of you have heard my testimony and I'm not going to repeat it, but I would not be here if it wasn't for prayer. And I'm not talking about my own. I'm talking about my mom. And I'm talking about my family and my church. I would not be alive standing in front of you, be able to be here if it wasn't for prayer. And at, at times in our lives, we can feel that, well, yeah, okay, I can pray about it, but is it actually going to happen? You know, we can doubt God and we can say, like, thanks for praying for me, but we, we don't believe it. We don't really believe that God can answer our prayers. And there's all kinds of circumstances in this place right now, and I know there's all kinds of testimonies, too. I, I think every one of us have had a prayer that has been answered because of a family member or because we have done it ourselves. 
So as we keep all of these in mind, I think all of us know that he's a prayer answering God. He's amazing. And I would not be here if it wasn't for that. So I just pray, um, as we keep a reminder, as they said before, I pray that you keep the kids campers this week, um, all the kids at camp. I remember so many instances at kids camp that God just reached down and touched every situation. And God can start to grow in their heart at that such a young age. And it's just so wonderful. So I, as we keep them in our prayers, and I also pray for Shirley um, more and healing for her um, just continually praying for healing and sorry my notes are not my phone powered down um, I also pray that we would brother Pate fell today and I pray that we continue to pray for his body that God would just continually work healing in his body and we believe it we believe he can do that and also pray for Sister Marna. She had a knee replacement surgery this past Monday. So just pray that that healing process that God would just continually work in her. Um, and as we bring all these needs to God, just anyone in this place, you know, God is a God of healing, and we know this. And no situation is too small, and no situation is too big. You know, we think of these small situations like, oh, you know, it's just so small. God doesn't care. He does. He really does. So as we, as we stand and we pray today, and you stand, please. Um, just remember all these needs. And if you have something in your heart that you don't, you don't want to bring out to somebody, that's okay. You can pray to God. It can just be you and God talking. So I, as we pray to just remember all these needs, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I pray in every need in this place, God. I pray for healing, Lord Jesus, that you would touch these kids' campers this week, God, that your Holy Spirit would move in that campground, God, that you would continue to move in their hearts, God. I pray for Sister Shirley Moore, God, the healing for her, God. You continually work in situations, God. You are God of power, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would pray for Brother Pate, God, that you would heal his body, God, in Jesus' name. God, I thank you, Jesus. You are God of healing, Lord, in every circumstance in this place, God. You can heal everything in this place, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, God, for every healing, Lord, and every touch in Jesus' name, God. Thank you, Jesus, Lord, every circumstance and every situation. You're so powerful, God. I pray in Jesus' name, God, just fill this room tonight and for this service, God. I thank you, Jesus. We believe it in your name, God. We trust you, Lord, with every circumstance and every situation, God. In Jesus' name, amen.
God saves. Our God saves. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Highest praises. Highest praises. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We give thanks. We give thanks. I'm grateful for, for who you, you are. are.
put our hands tonight together for the Lord. He's always chasing after us. Amen. I'm thankful that I serve a God that's always reaching for me. Even when I reject him, he's coming after me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, I feel good tonight. I don't know how y'all feel, but I, I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, musicians, everybody that was up here participating. I always say it, but I love seeing the students involved in, in whatever they can in the kingdom. Amen. You guys can be seated tonight. You guys, uh, I'd like to give thanks to Pastor. It's nice for him being here tonight, and uh, Sister Jean as well. Um, we have an amazing pastor and pastor's wife. Amen. Amen. What they've poured into me and my wife in this church, it's, it's unpayable. I, I love them tonight. Amen. You guys usually get out here at like 9.30 or 10 o'clock. Or is, so we've got about two, two and a half hours, so we should be okay tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Brother Greg says easy. Amen. If you got, if you got your Bibles tonight, if you can open, open it up to uh, Matthew chapter 10. Verse 1, you guys can stay seated. It's just one verse. If you don't see it on the screen, that's my fault because I didn't send it to anybody. Hey, you're good. Thank you. <laughs> it says, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits. Somebody say unclean spirits. To cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. When I read scripture, I like to look at patterns, if it repeats things or if there's a, a cause and effect. Uh, when I'm reading through the Bible, I'll pray those things that if the Lord commands me to do that, Lord, let me do that. But what I see here tonight in the scripture is that he called them. Students say he called them. One more time. He called them. Thank you. And he gave them afterwards power. Amen. The disciples were first called to follow Christ. He then gave them power after for the journey ahead in the gospel accounts that we read. But at its very core, they were called to be Christians, disciples, Christ followers, and to be Christ-like. Amen? Amen. A number of years ago, I was attending a, a different church where, in Iola where my grandpa had pastored. And uh, my mom and dad were student pastors there at the time, and we were putting on a drama uh, depicting Jesus' crucifixion. And the main thing we focused on was the walk uh, up to Golgotha Hill where he was crucified. It was set up just like this with two pews and a middle, middle aisle coming down. And in doing that, they asked us about a month before this, 
they were volunteering for parts. So we had bystanders and Roman soldiers and Jesus and the saints well, being new into the youth group, and I was a little bit bold, I, of course, the best role was Jesus. So when that came up, my hand went up. Um, long story short, I got the part of being Jesus. I was ecstatic. I was honored. I was nowhere close to being the Lord. Um, and I noticed when I raised my hand, I marked me down, Colton Dury, for the part of Jesus. I noticed two or three rows back, there was some older young people. And they were big, huge grins on their face, just super ecstatic. And I thought to myself, you know, they're just really happy that I got the part. They're really just super joyful that I was the one that was going to be Jesus in the play. The next part that was to be volunteered for was the two Roman soldiers that were to <laughs> walk Jesus down the aisle. Um, now, just to set this up in your mind properly, and you've, you've caught on to it already, but I was 12 years old, uh, newly into the youth group, but the years prior, I was the bratty 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 year old that would tag along on the trips, and I was very bold in picking on really any of the older boys. Very, I knew how to push those buttons and uh, do that thing. So now you know why they were very excited uh, when my mom then asked, now we need the Roman soldiers. And, Everybody, I'd, I'd never seen them so ecstatic and, and cooperative in class. They said, sign me up. They picked two of them. I think, oh, I think one of them was my brother, Philip. Is he here tonight? Okay, well, never mind then. But weeks before, we were in practice. Just take a time to embarrass him there. But uh, weeks before, we, we would practice this, and we did it several times. And in these practices, there was a script to be followed. It was something that was a drama. There was songs going on. And people would do their parts as we were um, in the song. People were to move and at certain points. So we're practicing this. Um, and like I'd said before, these boys took great passion and was very involved in the role. They got creative. And instead of a light roughing up, as the script had stated on it, they put, it, they put a little bit more creativity and passion into that. One of the times, very first take, I, I'll never forget, they shoved me so hard that I rolled down the aisle and hit my head off one of the wooden pews. Not, not only that, they got even more creative, and they were like, surely they, you know, roughed him up a little more, so they kicked me in the side, and that really hurt as well. And to top it off, this is when Mama Bear came in and said, okay, enough's enough, okay? There's, there's no more of this. They didn't realize or realize why the, the student pastors at the time, why they hadn't given them whips. So they took off their belts and they proceeded to have their own whips. And I got popped just like a towel. And, and that was the final straw. So I know that's funny and it's, it's even funnier now that I'm past that. But with lots of serious practice and pr uh, preparing for this night, for when we are going to do it, I feel that the church and then also our youth group, the people involved, got a perspective, something different. Nevertheless, I didn't go all through what Christ went for, but it was a, a good enough depiction of what Christ calls us to do when Scripture says to pick up your cross and to follow him, to be followers that when the word tells us, he calls us to serve, to minister, and go. That's what it looks like. It's not all glorious. And we can be assured tonight, and the title of my message is Empowered by the King, but that when he calls us to do these things, he gives us power, one, so we can be saved ourselves for salvation, amen, and it empowers us to go and to minister. Now, I know in this room tonight we have students sitting on the first two or three rows, and something that's been encouraging me in the past weeks, ever since convention got over, I'm going to set my timer is that God has been calling them. He's been drawing them by them telling me, and they're beginning to realize gifts that God has given them. And there's been people that came up to me and said, you know, I've, I've got this, and I told them, just point blank and bold, I said, God gave that to you, and you're to use it for the kingdom. Yeah. Amen, that's what we're doing up here tonight. And it's a call that has no generational limit. I see that God is calling them to use their gifts to spread the gospel. And I praise God for that tonight. I thank the Lord 
that we don't serve a God that sits on a shelf. We don't serve a God that fits in our pocket, but he's alive and living today and is calling all of us. Amen. And I'd like to look at some of the first people that he called some of the disciples in Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Uh, as Jesus went on, it says, and Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. It was that plain and simple. Follow me. And he got up and followed me. Brother Kevin, I gave you some scriptures to read. Here you go. Woo, give it up for Kevin. This will be Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 through 22. I appreciate him reading. Uh, one time in youth class, I was talking to, him about, talking to them about old Pentecost and how Brother Mooney in college one time, he asked me to read some scriptures. And it was like old time Pentecost. I would read and he would interrupt me and I said the wrong word and he said, heresy, young man. And I felt this small. So tonight, I'm not going to do that to Kevin, but I appreciate him reading. Go ahead, Brother Kevin. Verse 18. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, Pe Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Amen. How many fishers do we have in here tonight? Identify as fishers. All right, we're going to have to see some pictures for proof. But go ahead and vert with verse 19. And he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I will make you fishers of men. Now, I'm sure when they first heard this, it, was, it would befuddle me to, what do you mean by being fishers of men? But being a believer in 2024, this verse excites me, because I know what's to happen after this, and what is to follow. They didn't realize at the time, but when they accepted that call to follow Jesus, they were going to experience some of the most amazing things that mankind had never seen. Amen. I don't want to jump to the end, but I believe that we're going to also see this in this generation with this coming up. Amen. Amen. We have a generation coming up that's going to be after our elders, and this will not die out. Go ahead with verse 20. And straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with... Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. Thank you, Brother Kevin. So we have the call that, you can give him a hand. Yeah. We have Jesus calling these, these men that were fishers, and he says, follow me. We have three responses, and I want to draw attention tonight. It says, he got up and followed. They left their nets and followed they left their ship and their fathers, and they followed him. Yeah. Amen. It was that simple. It wasn't, Jesus, let me check my plans. Let me check what I have going on tomorrow. It was, Jesus, yes, I, I will follow you. And I'd like to recognize tonight that these men were very aware when they had said yes of the culture around them. They saw the wickedness. They saw the filth, the corruption that filled their cities and, and, and what they were living in. So, it must have brought a certain amount of weight to their mind when they say yes to follow him. Amen. The man standing before you tonight, when the Lord said, follow me, I've, it's not always been a yes, Lord, out of me. Amen. But rather I would work myself up and I looked at the peers around me that he would call me to reach. And that was one of the most intimidating things to, to see is, to, is, is when I say yes to this, I'm going to have to count the cost of what I would have to give up in order to minister to my peers. Yeah. Amen. To minister to those, to the ones around me. And at times, I would look at the walls around me and it seemed like it was closing in. I looked at the culture around me and every bold personality that was against God that I knew I would have to reach, I would have to face head on. And students, I'd like to recognize that that's a very real fear, but nothing that we can overcome. So that was one wall. Then I looked around me and I saw open sin in my schools in which I did not have the slightest beginning on how to approach them, on how to tell them, let alone any scripture or how to begin to minister to them. And I'll tell you tonight, it's much easier to fit in as a young person than to share your faith. I understand that. 
But I do believe there's a boldness and a decision to be made to share the gospel, to follow God's call. But I want to remind you, if you're just looking at your call and, and it seems like a hundred foot high tonight, that the first call was to follow. He called you first to follow. And there's confidence in that. One of the most well-known followers of Jesus, Jesus Christ, he traveled the most out of every single one of them. Paul, he said, he was telling his followers this after he had followed Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. And so there's a reason that the first call was to follow. They needed to learn how to do what they were supposed to do. When you answer that call, you're not going to be left high and dry. The Lord's not going to call you and leave you. The Lord's not going to leave you with nothing to say. Amen. 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 When he was calling them, he was calling them out of something they were very familiar with. Fishing. Fishing for people. And he was calling them into something they knew nothing about. For being fishers of fish to fishers of men. Amen. And that can be intimidating, but he's not going to leave you. For you note takers, this one's called the call. Christ, Christ called them to follow and in the beginning... He taught them the answers to both their sin that they were dealing with, because the Lord's going to purify you when you first come to him. You're going to see yourself and some things that, that, that are uh, maybe ugly sometimes. But, and then he both gave them the answers to the, the cultural sins that they were going to have to deal with. When you first come to Christ, you're going to see the stark difference in truths. And young people, maybe you can attest to this, maybe even more, but our culture, our world is all about my truth. Yeah. What, is, what my truth is not your truth and what her truth is not his truth. Right. And just know that in these last days when these revivals are coming, and I believe that revival is coming and it is here, that there are going to be people that you minister to that are going to be put before the Lord and they're going to see themselves in the truth, the truth, and they're going to compare it to theirs, and it will not match up. How many can say tonight that when you face the Lord, that there was a few things that did, ma did not match up of what he was commanding you to do? Amen. But I can tell you that truth is going to set them free. It will make them free, and we're so blessed to have pastor and, and preachers and teachers that quite, quite literally uh, spoon feed us what truth is supported by phenomenal saints it's such a great support system that I can run to the church and I know that I have support amen if you young people need support I encourage you to talk to some of these elders because the Lord has given them answers on maybe some of the things that you're going to have to go through amen I, I say it entirely too much but there's a reason that this sticks in my mind it's it's forever ingrained first coming to God even back to him as a believer who had messed up, you're going to see and hear things you do not like and don't agree with. Yeah. Amen. When Jesus first started his ministry, a lot of the things that he said was not meaning to be controversial, but very much met a lot of religious people that, that their truths did not match up. Amen. He said things that were contrary to what they had believed. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 2 through 10, and let me add that that is a great thing, that you see those things and then you continue to go down what his truth is. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. Anybody have a testimony tonight that you were searching for something to fill you up and the Lord met you right where you're at? It doesn't have to be in an altar. It can be at your home. It can be at your school. And he'll meet you right where you're at. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Blessed are ye which men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. And at the end of all that, the Lord tells us to rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they that came before you. 
Amen. So young person, when you're going to share your truth, your faith, the Lord's truth, just know that you're going to be met sometimes with roadblocks. That's okay. It says, blessed are they that persecute you. Amen. For your rewards in heaven. Amen. We see, we have a list of all these things that are not seemingly good up front, and that doesn't go with our normal, normal fleshly way of thinking. We don't think in our humanity uh, that these are a good thing. But Jesus went on to teach about murder and anger, divorce, forgiveness, loving your enemies, giving, prayer, fasting, worry, and treasures in heaven. Amen. With so many, with so many questions. That, that I hear from both the students, from my, my co-workers, from those around me, Jesus taught on a lot of things. And I can't find anything that's in my life that I've not been able to find the word, the answer in the word of God. That's somebody I want to follow. And so I know that we wrestle with thoughts that when the man of God or, or somebody that's over us tells us to serve and live for God. Amen. You want to say yes. But in the back of your mind, you say, I don't have a clue on what I'm doing. Can anybody attest to that? I don't have a clue. And it's intimidating. And I've heard the words come out of, of young people's mouth, not just in this church, but I want to do something. I have passion, zeal, and energy, but I don't know what I'm doing. It's a real thing. Can I encourage you tonight to just say yes? Amen. Somebody say yes. yes. Brother Mooney would open up every service and he would say, somebody say Yes. It, it, and I, it was a comical thing after a while. I never understood why, why he did that. And I thought it was just a, a playful thing before the, the beginning of service. But um, from the teachings I heard from a kid, it, it affirmed them that as a young person, as, as we grow older, we're to serve the kingdom. If the Lord tells us to say yes, to call, to call us to go somewhere, we're to say yes. He was posturing his church just to say yes to the Lord. No matter how intimidating it was, no matter what, what we already knew it was going to lie ahead, Jesus knew the cross was before him, but he still, all, he still did all that he did for one of us. Amen. Amen. Say yes and then follow him. How do we do that, students? Prayer, fasting, and service to the kingdom. That's really simple things. I say it a lot of times. But we sing songs that are filled with biblical lyrics for a reason. Amen? We've been praying. We've been sowing. Heaven send the rain. The rain's never going to come if we're not praying, if we're not sowing in our schools, if we're not stating the Lord's truth. There's never going to be a rain because we have not been preparing for what the Lord has. Rest assured that in the following, just as he did with the disciples, he's going to give you everything you need to empower you. Amen. Empower you to talk to that person beside you. Amen. If you don't know what you're specifically called to do, which I have been in individually, and me and my wife also, we have just uh, sometimes, it's, it seems like a, such a long time that you're just like, God, I'm ready. God, I'm call, I, I want to be that preacher, that teacher, whatever you call me to do, I want to do it now. But th sometimes there's a waiting, and there's frustration in that waiting. But can I encourage you tonight? Pick up a broom. Pick up, pick up a plunger. Get your hands a little dirty. Okay? There is plenty of things that we can be doing. And, and we actually stated in class the other night, we made a list of stuff that we can do, especially for this church. Amen? And after a time of following Christ, after following and in the waiting, he empowers them. Empowered by the king. He then empowered them. How did he do that? In Acts 1.8, the followers of Jesus, the ones who, may I say, did not stand perfectly by him. We can see a lot of times where they were still lacking even being with Jesus Christ himself. So let that be encouraging to you that if you stumble, that's okay. But they held on. They received what they needed for the New Testament church to be empowered for ministry. Amen. If you're here tonight and you're tired of, in, of the enemy having power over you and when you want to show others how to get out of that pit, out of that hole, out of that hole of depression, anxiety, that is so running rampant right now. And it's the lack of identification in Jesus Christ. 
And some people don't even know that they need it. And that's why some, some, somebody needs a young person to come, young and full of faith. If you want to know what to use that energy and passion for, go out and boldly proclaim the name of Jesus. You're going to get denied. You're going to get a hand in the face. But there's going to be somebody that's ready to receive that. Amen. Acts 1.8 says, but ye shall receive power. Somebody say power. After the Holy Ghost is come upon you. I praise God that most of our students have already experienced the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And for those who are still seeking it, you're going to get it. And Mary, at camp, she received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I praise God for that. Every time one of our students, every time somebody comes in and, and receives that, that's an amazing thing. Mary, you have received power. It's such an amazing thing to have, to be a witness. That's right. I, I, uh, I talk about Nicodemus and his conversation with Jesus quite often in class and to keep it fresh on their memory, but he asked one of the most important questions that there ever was to ask. And he said, Lord, how, how am I to be saved? How can I enter the kingdom of heaven? If we truly believe that there's a heaven and a hell and that there's things to do, how, to, how do I do that? And we know what he says. He says that you must be born of water and of spirit. For what that means for us tonight is baptism in Jesus' name and in filling of the, uh, of the Holy Ghost as tongues gives the utterance. Amen. As the Spirit gives utterance. Amen. That's an amazing thing that that's available to us tonight. I know we've heard this preached a lot, but I, I just want to say that I feel that the Holy Ghost is for everybody tonight. That is the power that I'm talking about the King is going to empower with for us, for every one of us. Amen. It's for everyone, and you shall be, it says in Scripture that after that you shall be witnesses both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. And for us today, can I say it's on my mission trip in my college and my community in my very own household, God wants me to be a witness. Amen. Amen. The most common thing that I encounter with Bible study with somebody is that they've already been filled with the Holy Ghost, or maybe they haven't, and I tell them that they've been empowered, and, and they're bursting at the seams to do what God's calling them inside of them. But one of the most common things I see is there's a qualifier in their mind. There's a limitation that they've put on themselves that... That young man, young woman, you think that I've done this and, and God can't really use me because I've, I've done a few things in my life. That somebody has a reputation in their mind of me and I'll never be able to overcome that. That I've messed up too much. That I'll never be a good enough person to do what God's called me to do. And I lead off with telling them right at the get-go, and it's a reality. I tell them that you are not good enough in yourself. You'll never hear me tell a young person that you are good enough because we're not. None of us are. In ourself, we are not good enough. You have messed up. You have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen? But I tell them, let's take a trip down memory lane at God's victories in their lives. How when they approached the cross and they saw how sinful... When they saw how sinful, in short, they had fallen. There was a God there that forgave them. When they let down their walls and cried out to a heavenly father, he was there to answer how God washed their sins away in a watery baptism that we have tonight. In Jesus' name, he washed their sins away. How he empowered them by the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And if you don't know what that is tonight, there's witnesses to your left and to your right, behind you, in front of you. And he gave them power over all of those things. Listen, all of those things that is in your mind that you're struggling with, he gives you power over them. I'm standing as a living witness. That is that power gives you not only to witness to other people, but it'll give you power to deliver you out of the sin that you're actively doing right now. Praise God. I prayed that the Lord would allow me to deliver my passion for what he's done for me tonight. Amen. That I would be an effective communicator to be able to stand behind this pulpit and say that God is good. 
that the power that he gives you, it's like nothing else. I don't want anybody to be bound by their past tonight. So tonight I'm here to tell you that the enemy keeps throwing that up in your face only because of this. He has no memory of God's victories in your past. He has no memory of of the day you were delivered. He has no memory of what monumental moment he's done in your life. In the Old Testament with Daniel, we just got done with Daniel last month, but King Nebuchadnezzar, he was so blessed having Daniel in the kingdom and he didn't even know it at first. That Daniel's God would come through every time and consequently it was a blessing to the kingdom. And you see in just the very next chapter, not four or five paragraphs later in the book, that he suddenly forgets about the God, the, the God Jesus, Daniel's God. He forgets about everything that he had done for them previously. So know tonight that the enemy throws up those past hurts, those past sins in your face because he has no memory of what God's done in the past. He doesn't have the capacity. Amen. You are good enough in God. Your purpose is found at the cross. Your sin and guilt can be washed away in baptism. And the Lord can and will empower you for the first time tonight or he will refill you. Amen. With the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. It's an amazing thing to get excited, and I believe there should be an an emotional response to the preached word of God. But you are empowered to reach a generation for a reason. It's not just for yourself. It's for a generation that is before you. And you can tell me better than I can tell you, but they're confused, and they're finding themselves in very particular situations where they do not have an answer to it. If you're not aware... The youth of our world are searching for something to identify with. It's not a new message, but there are a few new things that I've seen introduced. They're searching high and low and changing what God created just to find it. Not out of spite, but just because they don't know where else to find it. I believe the church is the place to find it. This is the reality that of people that are in need of of some young woman, some young man. Sometimes you don't even realize it, but your age, you see it as a bad thing. I see it as a good thing. When somebody in the community sees somebody young living for the Lord, it just, it's, it's something else. They're just, they're so excited to see that this is still being preached. This is still true. This is still alive. Amen. And I tell this, and it's convicting. I tell this in class, but if we truly have that truth to cure depression, anxiety, confusion, over every mind, if we truly have that power to have dominion over those things we struggle with, and we do not do that, that's one of the most selfish things that I've probably ever seen, that if we truly have that, and so that'll convict us to go and actually do what the Lord's telling us. Amen. I just want to share one example tonight of of what I'm talking about. There's a, a young lady by the name of Seren, and Seren was just like any other little girl growing up. She liked to play with dolls, play dress up with others, have tea parties, etc. The older she got, she started to lose uh, her identity of who she was as a person. There was a lot of things in her life and in her mind that just were not adding up. She didn't know what was going on as she started to hate, hit the age of change in her life. And so at the age of 11... Seren felt that she no longer was a girl, but she was a a little boy. Amen. She felt like she was a little boy. And time went on, and she started to proclaim this to a few people. And by the age of 17, she started taking hormone therapy to be able to start the alter thing, altering the things that were internally and externally going on in her body. By the age of 19, she had had two years of the recommended hormone therapy in order to make that transition. Through this whole process, she had been attending support groups of like-minded people. They were confused, but they found console and comfort in knowing that somebody else didn't know who they were. And when I hear that, that alone, just it, it, it makes me cry out, God, let me be there for those people. Let me be bold enough to, to find a seren that in my classroom when I see her being quiet in the corner and maybe she's an outcast and you know that her home life maybe not the best, that she's struggling with who she was. Just let me simply just say something of what God has done for me and what he can do for her. 
Amen. She had the surgery at the age of 19, and she thought that after this, these words are just beyond what I can. She thought that she would belong in the world and in her own body if she had made that transition. And I do not condemn her, but I'd rather I would reach towards her and tell her what the truth is. Sadly to say, there was complications, and after the surgery, there was nothing but those complications. At the age of 21, after had, having the surgery, she had to be rushed into the emergency room because there was blood pooling in her chest. She was in very poor shape, and she was on the verge of dying. She was on the verge of that because of the reconstruction that they, she, she had had on her chest. She had had a long stint of recovery and a long road ahead, and she's just now coming out with all of this information. And do you know what she said at the end of it all? She said, nobody will understand the complications that come with these procedures and these treatments until they experience them. She said, I know I didn't, and then reality caught up with me. You see, there's new things and, and, and new sins and new tactics that the enemy is using, seeking whom he may devour to try to confuse the man and the woman in this world. Tearing down family constructs, removing the men out of the home, and, and, and trying to attack women's identity. Now it's, it's running rampant through the news. And this is the call that, I'm not going to lie, at times it is very intimidating. But there is a truth that we have. If you'd all stand with me, please. I appreciate you listening and being attentive, but I'd like to do something tonight that I got taught years ago to do, and it's helped me ever since. If you'd all close your eyes tonight, musicians, you can come. Now in your head right now, I'd like you to imagine the person you've been praying for, maybe a, a person you've seen in need or whatever it may be, the family member that's backslidden, the person you've had a chance to share Jesus with and didn't, the grieving father that was across the table from you, the young person who's trying to get trying and experimenting with everything under the sun just to have an experience, just to experience what they could find here. Now that same person, imagine them standing around an altar. Hands raised as God himself is pouring out his spirit on them. Tears begin to flow down their face because they've finally found what they're missing in life. The answer's here, church. We have it, and we've got to go spread that. We're empowered by the King, and that's the call tonight. If you're filled with the Holy Ghost, I encourage you to come get refilled. Empowerment by the King is not meant just to win souls in the simple act of obedience of us just saying, yes, Lord, I'll follow. That's the way for the supernatural. You don't have to make it happen yourself. So tonight I'll end with this and I'll get out of the way and you can respond in your own way. But we find ourselves asking and, and looking for God, what do you want me to do with all of my, with my youth, my zeal, my passion, with my, with my time? Tonight we follow him. Tonight we're called by him to reach this community and those surrounding us. I think our prayer ought to look a little bit like tonight. You can pray whatever you'd like, but God, if I'm in need of forgiveness tonight, there's an altar where I can come to and say, Lord, forgive me. If I've not been baptized with the water or the spirit, we've got water and the Lord is here tonight to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. These altars are open for who ever wants to come and respond to this, but just know that there's a community out there, that there is somebody right now that is not in this house. They're out there experimenting with stuff. They're out there, they're lost, they're confused in their mind, and the only person to reach them may be you. The only person may be you tonight. Lord, we love you tonight. I pray that you would, Lord, plan into us this evening. It is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone and 
and I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you.
Hallelujah. I feel very impressed right now and uncomfortable all in the same time to ask that as a church we press one more time and let God's spirit reign in this place because I believe in every heart that we want revival, but he's not going to give it to us unless we're ready to follow him and submit ourselves to him. And we have to, we have to be responsible with the babies that he gives us. And I pray that every prayer in this house tonight is that we can look at him and not the distractions next to us. So if we would reach out and maybe connect with people around us, that so we pray for unity and we pray for revival and we pray amongst anything and above anything to follow Jesus. had an encounter with the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I worship your name this evening. God, I don't want to leave anything on the table tonight for what you have for me. Lord, we respond tonight. We say yes, Lord. Lord, we're ready for revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. call tonight has went forward and that's to follow the Lord. He's going to empower us to go on.
Thank you, Lord. Let's respond to that tonight, Lord. I'm coming to you. This is why we come to church to hear from the Lord. Amen. I appreciate what I felt tonight and what the Lord has told every single one of us. Amen. Thank you guys for coming to Wednesday night church and thank you for allowing us to be with you all. Amen. Well, let's give the Lord praise for what he's done here tonight. Amen. For all that he has done. Praise God. I just want to take just a moment. Uh, there are T-shirts in the foyer, and I love. I, I may just get if they had a bunch of colors, I'd get one in every color, because I only usually wear one size, so I can't get them in different sizes. Amen. Or if they're going to be different sizes, I need to go larger. Right. It says, "Fight the mic fight." This is in support of Mike Donnelly. It says on the front, support squad. And then it says, fight the Mike fight. And then on the back, it says, faith over fear. And then it mentions Psalms 56. When I'm afraid, I put my trust in you. This is to support the Donnellys. And uh, Rissa's got a table in the back. It's their order form. It's an order form. Okay, so she'll be back there. If you want to get a, a T-shirt to support Mike and all the... Man, he's, he's been through a lot, and he's still going through. Well, there he is. He's sitting right there. <laughs> I didn't even know he was here tonight. Good to see you, Brother Mike. I come up the side aisle. We love and appreciate Mike Donnelly. Amen. We want to support him in this. Of course, there's a lot of, uh, lot of, medical, situ a lot of medical bills and things, and, and we understand that. But we want to be a support to him. So stop by uh, or see Sister Rissa if you want to order a T-shirt. Do you have a place out back? Okay, she will be out back, out back. That's a good place to eat, too, <laughs> be out back. <laughs> Amen. So stop by and see Rissa, order you one of those great-looking T-shirts. They look great, and uh, be a support to Brother and Sister Donnelly. Amen. We thank God for what he's done tonight. Amen. Greet somebody. Tell them you're glad to see them in church tonight. Amen. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord on you. Take overnight. Didn't they do wonderful? <laughs>